1956, the skies over the Middle East roared with the clash of jet engines. Israeli pilots, gripping the controls of their Dassault Ouragans, soared into a showdown against Egypt's MiG-15s. The Israelis were flying France's first indigenously designed jet fighter, about to be battle-tested far from its homeland. Armed with four 20mm cannons and capable of carrying an array of rockets and bombs, the Ouragan was a flying arsenal. With a single Rolls-Royce Neen turbojet engine, it could reach speeds of up to 584 miles per hour and ascend to altitudes as high as 39,000 feet thanks to its pressurized cockpit. As the dogfights unfolded against a technically superior opponent, they took down multiple aircraft in a single day of battle. And they did so not under the French tricolore, but under the Israeli Star of David. In the aftermath of World War II, France was entirely obliterated by years of occupation and conflict. This also applied to the nation's once burgeoning aviation industry. During the conflict, while the industries in countries like America, Britain, and the Soviet Union evolved through the creation of countless aircraft, by the mid-1940s, France was lagging far behind in technology and design innovations. As such, to bolster the Air Force's frontline inventories, the nation had no choice but to purchase foreign aircraft, either new or used. However, the burgeoning field of jet technology in this era would offer an opportunity to level the playing field. Keen to catch up, French specialists, many of whom had been sent to the United States and Great Britain, advocated for collaborative efforts with these nations before embarking on national projects. France's aeronautical industry set ambitious goals, and within a short period, French aviation engineers were picking back up the pieces of their beloved industry. Soon, engineering departments were busy with dozens of civil and military projects, ranging from training planes to transoceanic transport aircraft, and from lightweight fighters to heavyweight bombers. This opened an ambitious era of French aviation collaboration. Yet, amid the rapid advancements in collaborative endeavors, another powerful aspiration took root creating a fully French-designed jet aircraft. One of the most important pre-war French aviation innovators was Marcel Bloch, who in 1945 returned to his home after nearly a year in captivity at the Buchenwald concentration camp as punishment for refusing to cooperate with the Nazi regime. In a symbolic act of renewal and tribute, Bloch renamed both himself and his aviation manufacturing company, Dassault, after his brother's wartime codename within the French resistance. While Dassault faced a nation struggling to regain its footing, he was eager to lead the design, development, and mass production of an all-French fighter, powered by the newly developed jet propulsion technology. Particularly, the engineer was keen to roll out the aircraft as fast as possible to corner the emerging market. Recognizing a unique opportunity, Dassault knew he needed to keep his objectives attainable and practical to succeed. And so, setting up the factory with the bare minimum of equipment, Dassault embarked on the development of an all-French, single-seat, jet-powered fighter aircraft. By the end of 1947, following a positive response from the government, the design phase was underway, allocated the design number MD-450, and Dassault agreed to build three models. Only six months after the first sketches were put on paper, the first prototype's construction began on April 7, 1948, at the company's factory in Saint-Cloud, near Paris. Reviving the standards of Bloch Company aircraft from the pre-war years and drawing on experience gained on the MB-150 series of fighters and its derivatives, the small Dassault team designed the simplest airframe possible, a small aircraft, light, inexpensive, and as effective as the engine would allow. Dassault's design was also inspired by American aircraft, with features such as the Lockheed P-80 Shooting Star's thin wing and the North American F-86 Sabre's basic configuration. Prioritizing its role as an interceptor, Dassault engineers designed the Ouragan with a fast rate of climb in mind. To achieve this, they used a Rolls-Royce Nîmes turbojet engine, which was already being licensed produced in France by Hispano Suiza for the SNK SE535, which was in turn a license-built version of the British de Havilland Vampire. The cockpit was pressurized to complement this, allowing the aircraft to ascend to altitudes as high as 39,000 feet without compromising pilot comfort or performance. This engine delivered upwards of 5,070 pounds of thrust, giving the models a maximum speed of 584 miles per hour and a range of 620 miles. Key to the success of the jet-powered fighter is its multi-role capability, including the role of a fighter-bomber. Standard armament for the Ouragan included four 20mm cannons with 125 rounds each housed beneath the forward fuselage. 
It could also carry 16 individual 105mm rockets or various drop bombs, including napalm. Optional Matra rocket pods with 18 SNEB 68mm rockets each were available. The aircraft could be fitted with external drop tanks to extend its range, making it versatile for various mission types. With 5,000 pounds of external storage across four hardpoints, the Ouragon was a true multi-role combatant. The Dassault Ouragon, France's first jet aircraft designed and produced domestically, marked a milestone for the Armée de l'Air. Designed and developed in just 18 months, the first prototype flew in February 1949. Initial versions lacked pressurization and armament, but subsequent models incorporated these features. The first Air Force unit to be equipped with the aircraft in November 1952 was the 12th Cambrai Wing. The Ouragan, French for hurricane, was quickly recognized for its solid flying capabilities. When piloted by a trained airman, it could effectively compete with contemporary aircraft. Due to the rapid service entry of the type, the whole test program had not been completed, leading to multiple instances of pilots inadvertently executing involuntary maneuvers. In particular, the aircraft tended to snap sharply during a hard turn, causing unintended spins. This quirk was significant, as such turns were frequently required in dogfighting scenarios where the aircraft's cannons were employed. Despite its imperfections, the Ouragan won the hearts of many pilots who were proud to fly a homegrown design. The type's agility and enhanced handling earned it two years as the display aircraft of the La Patrouille de France aerobatic team. Although initially ordered in large quantities, production numbers were eventually reduced in favor of another Dassault model, the Mystère series, which improved upon the Ouragan's limitations. The Mystère aircraft became the new standard, signaling the gradual retirement of the Ouragan in the French Air Force by May 1955. They were fully replaced by the Mystère 4 by 1961, although some Ouragans lingered in training roles until the mid-1960s. While the Ouragan didn't see combat in the hands of the French, its export to other countries would grant it a new life in military conflict. In 1953, France exported combat aircraft for the very first time since before World War II. India was the first to make a move on the Dassault model, placing an order for 71 Ouragans, later renamed Tufanis, Typhoons, and eventually upping that order to 113. The nation used its Tufanis for various operations, including the 1961 annexation of the Portuguese colony of Diu and quelling anti-government forces within its borders. The jets served as the fighting mainstay of the Indian Air Force, until they too were replaced with the Dassault Mystère, beginning in 1957. Meanwhile, thousands of miles away, Israel faced a more urgent set of challenges that inadvertently led to the Oregon's most major military operation. Israel, needing to upgrade its arsenal due to increasing tensions with its Arab neighbors, initially eyed the Mystère 2C and CL-13B Sabre 6. But the nation found itself in a bind when Canada vetoed any arms sales that could exacerbate Middle East tensions and development problems with the Mystère emerged. With no other options, Israel adopted the Ouragan as a necessary interim solution. In 1955, a mix of new and retired Air Force planes arrived, equipping five close support squadrons with reportedly 70 Ouragans in total. Tensions reached a boiling point in April 1956, when Egypt intensified its Fedayeen campaign involving cross-border attacks into Israel. That month, an Israeli Ouragan scored its first victory by shooting down an Egyptian vampire jet over Israeli territory. But it wasn't until the fall of 1956 that tensions escalated further, as Egypt nationalized the Suez Canal, alarming global powers and Israel, while this also set the stage for Ouragan's capabilities to finally be put to the test. The nationalization of the canal also intensified Israel's security concerns. By October, when Egypt had allied with Jordan, further tightening the circle around Israel, they sent a clear message. They would not stand idle. And with tensions at an all-time high, following a crucial cabinet decision that led to the agreement of a preemptive strike, on the 28th, Israel launched its daring operation. The Israeli Oregon pilots initially feared the Egyptian pilots, as they fielded the more powerful Mikoyan Guryevich MiG-15 jet-powered fighters. However, upon encountering them, it soon became obvious that they were far less trained, and the Egyptians rarely understood the power inherent in their Soviet systems. As described by aviation magazine The Aeroplane, the Egyptian pilots had, quote, an overdeveloped instinct for self-preservation. While the Israeli pilots typically faced groups of four to up to eight Egyptian MiG-15s, 
and still held their own with pairs of Mysteres and Ouragans, easily overcoming technically superior Egyptian aircraft. When the campaign opened on October 29th with airborne landings in the Mitla Pass area, 30 miles east of Suez, a constant Mystera patrol was maintained with Ouragan and Meteor escort. In the early hours of the following day, two Ouragans shot down four enemy vampire fighter bombers. Initially, the Israeli Air Force was designated to protect domestic targets from an anticipated Egyptian air assault. This defensive posture was in response to the high-tension environment following the nationalization of the canal and its increased military activities near the Israeli border. However, when the anticipated Egyptian aerial assault never materialized, the Israeli Air Force shifted its focus to providing air support for ground operations. Given their effectiveness and versatility, Ouragans performed a quarter of these support missions and within a week played a key role in gaining control of the Sinai Peninsula. October 31st, 1956 was a day marked by multiple significant encounters between Israeli and Egyptian forces where Ouragans would emerge victorious again and again. In the morning, a pair of Ouragans on patrol east of Bir Hama suddenly found themselves in the crosshairs of eight Egyptian MiG-15s. Outnumbered, but not outmatched, the Israeli jets fiercely held their ground. Just when the situation seemed critical, reinforcements arrived. A pair of Israeli Mysteres swooped in, successfully taking down one of the enemy MiGs. In the next engagement, the Israeli Ouragans achieved an even greater victory. Armed to the teeth with napalm, they were strafing a tank column near Bir Gifgafa when enemy MiG swooped in. The lead Israeli pilot performed extraordinary aerial acrobatics, outclassing his Egyptian foe and landing a barrage of devastating shots. Even with malfunctioning cannons, he managed to wreak havoc on one of the MiGs, forcing it into a hasty withdrawal. Triumphant, the Israeli Ouragans roared back to base, victorious once more. As Israel sought to cripple Egypt's military capabilities further in the Sinai Peninsula, one particular Ouragan stood out for its audacity and execution. On this fateful October 31st, Israeli Ouragans were dispatched on a mission to neutralize the Ibrahim el airfield, considered a vital asset for Egypt's air operations in the region. As the Ouragans approached the target, they encountered anti-aircraft fire that skillfully maneuvered to maintain their attack formation. Despite the flak and ground fire, the Ouragan pilots successfully released their ordnance, rendering the airfield inoperable. This accomplishment had two immediate effects. It grounded any potential sorties by the Egyptian Air Force from that base, and it showcased the Oregon's effectiveness in a combat role, even under challenging circumstances. What made the mission all the more daring was its timing, as it happened mere days after Egypt nationalized the Suez Canal, sending a clear message to its enemy. Lauded for its maneuverability at low levels and stability as a firing platform, the Oregon, once bought as an interim solution, was even more valuable for ground attack than in air-to-air -air combat, and the squadrons flying it accounted for a significant portion of the tanks and other military vehicles destroyed from the air. Only two Ouragans were lost during the five days of fighting to enemy small arms fire, which was far more lethal than the Egyptian fighters or anti-aircraft defenses. As the Israeli Defense Air Force Commander-in-Chief summed up later, quote, the Ouragan was a much better airplane than had been thought. More combat followed in the 1967 Six-Day War until the type was relegated to advanced jet training for future generations of Israeli fighter pilots. El Salvador attempted to update its air force with Ouragans bought from Israel between 1973 and 1978. These aircraft participated in the Salvadorian Civil War from 1980 to 1992, used against communist forces. By the 1990s, the last Oregons in service in the world had been replaced by the American Cessna A-37 Dragonfly.